Hello everyone, welcome to study IQ. So I will start off with uh, arithmetic progression now. So we will discuss about AP, GP and uh, what I will do is I will basically discuss the concept of AP, GP today and then uh, we will move on to percentage, average, simple interest, compound interest, all these concepts will be discussed today. Then we will start uh, solving the questions in the second session of today, right? So the agenda for today's session is basically I will try to complete AP, GP then uh, average, average uh, again simple average and uh, weighted average then we will also discuss about mixtures, allegation, okay all these uh, will be covered together after that uh, we will discuss about simple interest, compound interest all those uh, topics then uh, in the next uh, session we will try to take up the problems and uh, we will solve all the problems right we will also look into the previous CAT questions as well as the possible questions which can be asked and we will also take some of the difficult questions also so what is uh, I will start off with AP what is AP like if you write 1 2 3 4 5 if you write the first 10 natural numbers it is an AP right so arithmetic progression you see this common difference 1 so all the number in the series is having a common difference 1 now mostly you will get pattern based questions in AP and GP you can see a lot of uh, pattern based question so if you are able to relate it in the first like 30 seconds or something you solve it otherwise uh, uh, it, it is going to be a difficult question you will end up in wasting time okay anyway we will be discussing about some of the important patterns that you can get in uh, such kind of questions also but uh, if you see this this is an AP right now if you take uh, 2 4 6 8 10 etc this is also in an AP right because you have a common difference of 2 here right because you have a common difference of 2 now if you take uh, 15 10 right then 5 0 minus 5 this is also an AP right so here also you can see the difference right difference is 5 difference is 5 difference is 5 difference is 5 right so this is also an AP now what are the possible questions they can ask you from AP see uh, they can ask you hardly few questions directly it's like uh, what is the nth term they can ask you what is the nth term or they will give you a set of uh, like numbers okay and they will tell you this is in an AP sometimes uh, they will give you the first number as well as the last number and the common difference then it is not a question that is easy direct you just need to apply the formula last minus first divided by common difference right plus one that is what your number of terms okay nth term there is a formula a plus n minus 1 into d. I am just discussing the formula for the sake of discussing it anyway, right? So, just uh, this is the number of terms, this is nth term. Now, see, if they are giving a, that means the first term, and they are giving common difference, right? You can find uh, nth term by using a plus n minus 1 into d, right? So, if you need to find the 11th term, this will become a plus 10d because n minus 1 n is 11 right you put n is equal to 11 so if you need to find uh, t 11 or 11th uh, term okay you write it as a plus 10d a you know let's take this series 10 20 30 40 etc right so this two is enough to understand the first term and the common difference right what is the first term first term is 10 so you'll substitute a is equal to 10 common difference 10d that means 10 into 10 again that is nothing but 100 so what is the 11th term 110 that is easy right what is the second uh, way in which they can ask you a question? They will ask you how many such terms are there within a range of 100 or something like that, right? So, how will you find the n, n? If you need to find n, there is nothing but last minus first divided by common difference plus 1. Now, there is no point in remembering the formula, but if you can remember this, the, you may get a lot of questions from this, right? Because this is nothing but uh, a plus n minus 1 into d only. Here, you need to find n, right? So, what you are doing actually? nth term is equal to a plus n minus 1 into d you are taking this a right so it become n minus a n means this is tn right we are actually finding tn nth term right so this is nothing but tn minus a that means uh, last minus first right now this uh, d when it comes here it will be a denominator then d then this n minus 1 n is what you need to find out right so minus 1 become plus 1 so that is what you have written here last minus first divided by common difference plus 1 so these are two formulas which is uh, required in most of the cases uh, we have discussed lot of division questions right so there I told you some of you have already attended that classes some of you who join late uh, there is no problem we will be discussing it again anyway what are the questions uh, which I have discussed there uh, I have discussed n is a number they will not tell you what is a number which one, which one divided by 6 
leaves a remainder 1 which when divided by 7 leaves a remainder 1 right this type of question so basically you don't know what is n n can have many values right what is the first possible value you take lcm because this belongs to a type 1 category which we have discussed where the remainder is same right when the remainder is same answer is lcm plus remainder what is lcm here lcm of devices right so that is nothing but 42 plus 1 which is 43 so 43 is the first possible term which satisfy both the condition but there are many such terms not only one term there are many such terms which will satisfy the condition and all will form an ap that is what most important thing because you can get a question from there also anything which can be asked from an ap can be asked uh, from here also rather than giving you an ap directly right rather than giving you an ap like uh, 43 comma 85 comma 127 etc rather than giving this ap directly and asking a question from this they can tell you that ap they can define an ap like this right they can give, define the function or ap like this n is a number which when divided by 6 leaves a remainder 1 which when divided by 7 leaves a remainder 1 then they can tell you n is a set of uh, natural numbers within a range of 1 to 100 or 1 to 1000 or whatever it is then they can ask you any questions they can ask you nth term they can ask you sum of terms they can ask you how many terms are there within a range etc let's see how they are going to ask question now how this is going to make an ap first term we understood 43 why 43 is the first number which satisfy both these condition when divided by 6 leaves a remainder 1 when divided by 7 leaves a remainder 1 right what is the next number if you need to get the next number you need to add 42 what is 42 42 is nothing but the lcm of the devices and that will be the common difference of the ap right so you're going to get a series 43 plus 42k 43 is the first term 42 is the common difference and it's an ap right now any question which can be asked from an ap can be asked here they can ask you nth term nth term means if i am asking 11th term how will you find you will find a plus 10 d a you know 43 d you know 42 so that is nothing but 463 why 10 d is 420 because i know it's 42 a is 43 so i add that 463 so if i ask you how many such terms are there within a range of 500 right so 1 to 500 how many such terms are there now you know already first term is 43 now within 500 you know 463 is the 11th term right if you need to find the 12th term you need to add 42 again then it becomes 500 plus so you understood that 463 is your last term right otherwise also you can find it you understood that 463 is the last term now your answer is last minus first divided by common difference plus one right how will you do it 463 minus 43 divided by common difference that is nothing but 42 plus 1 what you'll get this you'll get as 420 by 42 plus 1 that is nothing but 11 that's what you in fact find out here 11th term so this is another question now what else they can ask you if uh, you have a set of uh, such numbers within a range of 500 you know first term is 43 last term is 463 what is the sum of the possible numbers right so basically sum of an ap now what is sum of an ap Sn can be represented as n by 2 into 2a plus n minus 1 into d. Okay, so sum you have another formula also n by 2 into first term plus last term. This is applicable when you know the last term. So here 43 is the first term, 463 is the last term. So you substitute here, you substitute here, you know n is equal to 11, right? So you get the answer. If you don't know the last term, you will apply this, right? You know n is equal to 11, you know n is equal to 11, you know a, right? That is nothing but 43, n is nothing but 11, right? D, you know, that is nothing but 42. So in case if you know the last term, you will apply this. In case if you don't know the last term, you will apply this. Now here in this question, which one you will use if they asked about the sum of last uh, sum of first 11 terms if they are asking sum of 11 terms right what you will do you know the first term is 43 you know the common difference is 42 right so you know this is a series right they are asking you sum of 11 terms so you know n so n by 2 into a 2a plus n minus 1 into d is the best because they are giving you sum of 11 terms directly right so you substitute this n is equal to 11 this a is 43 n is 11 d is 42 you will get the answer right but if they are not telling you there are 11 terms they will tell you n is a set of numbers right they are just telling you set of numbers within a range of 500 then you don't know what is n you don't know the last term also right but what you know is last term is less than 500 anyway right you know the first term which is 43 you know the common difference which is 42k now based on this right you need to find the last term which is less than 500 which can come in the series right how will you find it so if you see this you know 
that the numbers which can come in the series is nothing but multiples of 42 plus 1 right so 421 will be one number right next will be 421 plus 42 that is 463 next will be 463 plus 42 that is nothing but 4505 right so that will not come so this is the last term now after getting last term what is your formula n by 2 into first plus last you need to find the n also when you have the last term when you have the first term you can find n and you can solve it okay that is one way so what we have discussed just four things if it is nth term a plus n minus 1 into d right if it is uh, n that means how many terms are there that means n is what you need to find out right so this you will represent as tn nth term if you need to find n this is nothing but last minus first divided by the difference plus 1 so this is actually from here only see if this is what you need to find out you will apply this if this is what you need to find out means you will go for this right the same only you will just change it right now what is sum sum is n by 2 into 2a plus n minus 1 into d in which case n is given first term and common difference is known n is given that means 11 terms or 12 terms or 10 terms or 1000 term which is given right you have an ap 1 2 3 4 right up to 1000 terms right up to 1000 terms they are saying it's not given right so you know this is anyway 1000 right so what you will do you will apply that and you will get the answer right or if you know the last term and number right if you know the last term and number then n by 2 into first term plus last term now what about gp geometric progression what is gp 1 2 4 right multiples of uh, 2 here i am going to write 8 16 32 etc it will go so here instead of common difference you will say common ratio so instead of d it become r actually there is no difference right so but instead of d you are writing it as r so what is r here 2 here also 2 here also 2 here also 2 here also 2 or another one which i can write is 27 9 3 1 1 by 3 etc 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 right so what is the common difference here 1 by 3 Now what is nth term here? If you need to find nth term, if you need to find 100 term or 1000 term or whatever it is, you will just substitute n. So t10, okay, if you need to find t10 or if you need to find tn, if you need to generalize, it is nothing but a r raised to n minus 1. Okay, so what is the change when it comes to gp? See, whatever you are adding in ap, you will multiply. Whatever you multiplied in ap, it will go as power. Okay, so whatever you are adding there, you need to multiply here, right? So that's why earlier you have a plus n minus 1 into d right so a and d you are adding so here a and d r is actually d only right you are multiplying so whatever you added this plus became into here this n minus 1 into d which you multiplied that became power here right so whatever is multiplied become power whatever is added become multiplication right so that is the difference so what is nth term a r raised to n minus 1 if it is a t 10 a r raised to 10 minus 1 which is nothing but a r raised to 9 so nth term a r raised to n minus 1 what about sum a into 1 minus r raised to n divided by 1 minus r or you have another one also a into r raised to n minus 1 divided by r minus 1 it depends on the r value of if r is less than or if r is greater than it depends on r value right so it depends on r is less than and r is greater than so now you get uh, questions like this right you might have seen uh, in papers pre previous papers questions like this you have a square right you joining the midpoints of the square you get another square you join the midpoints of the square you get another square you join the midpoints you get another square and it, it, it continues right and they will give you the outer area or outer side let's say outer side is 20 right so you need to find the sum of all the areas right so this is a gp right because area is uh, divided by half right so see this is in this ratio 1 is to 2 right if this area is 2 this is 1 this is 1 by 2 right this is 1 by 4 etc it is going on right so if you know the outer area that is 220 is the side that means 400 is the area right if you know the outer area that is nothing but it's a gp this is actually making a gp with a common ratio 1 by 2 right so a sum of infinity is actually a by 1 minus r so 400 is the a here first term 1 minus 1 by 2 is nothing but 800 
So now onwards, if you see this kind of question, square, midpoint, midpoint, midpoints are added, another square, another square, you need to find the sum means, find the just uh, outer area, take twice of it, okay? So if it is uh, 16 is one side, 256 is the area, your sum will be, total sum will be 512, because 256 by 1 minus 1 by 2, there is nothing but 256 by 1 by 2, there is nothing but 256 into 2, right? So in all these cases, if a square adding the midpoints and forming another square keep on adding that sum to infinity of a GP is what you need to find out. Okay, what is that? A divided by 1 minus R. A is the area of the first square. The R is a common ratio, right? Or instead of a square, you can get a triangle also, right? You are adding the midpoints of the triangle, another triangle and again you will add like this, right? So here what is the common ratio? Now if you take one triangle, what they are doing is you are, you are dividing one triangle into four, right? You are joining the midpoint means 1, 2, 3, 4. So what is the ratio? Ratio is actually 1 by 4. The first triangle, outer triangle and the inner triangle, if you see the ratio will be 1 by 4. Or this, if you take, if you shade this, what is the ratio of the shaded region to the total region? Total, how many regions, equal regions are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, right? 1, 2, 3, 4 equal regions are there. Out of that, 1 is shaded, right? So 1 by 4 is actually the ratio. So what is common ratio? If you ask me, that is 1 by 4. Now this is keep on adding the triangles here. So this is also going up to infinity, right? So if I ask you, if I tell you the outer area, if I give you outer area A, outer area A in an equilateral triangle, what is the answer of sum of uh, all the areas? A divided by 1 minus R, right? So what is R here? A divided by 1 minus 1 by 4. There is nothing but A by 3 by 4. There is nothing but A into 4 by 3 or 4A by 3. Now, rather than giving uh, A as area, if you are given A as a side, you know how to find area, right? Of an equilateral triangle, root 3 by 4, A square, right? Now you know, once you get the area, what is the answer? 4 by 3, right? Those, this got cancelled and this become root 3, right? This is nothing but A square by root 3. So what is this A? A is a side now. So if the side is given, take square of it, divide by root 3. Now from the option, you can pick it faster. Or sometimes they will give you questions like this 4 pi diagram that uh, anyway I'm going to discuss in detail in GP like you have a square okay and uh, you have a circle which is inscribed in the square or they can tell you you can circumscribe also this is also possible okay but let's start off like this then you have uh, like another square which is uh, inscribed in the circle right then you have a circle again like this okay you have a square again, right? You have a circle again, and this process is continuing, right? This process is continuing till infinity. So, only thing that you need to know here is, right? So, square and circle, if you see, the ratio is always 4 and pi. Why it is 4 and pi is because if you take uh, r is equal to 1, r is equal to the radius of the circle is 1, okay? This is touching. You imagine this is touching. r is 1 means the side is 2, right? So, what is the area? of the square, 2 square which is nothing but 4, that is a square, right? What about the circle? Pi r square, r is 1, so which is nothing but pi. So that's why this is 4 and pi. Now whatever you put for r or the side, okay, anyway side will be twice of r, right? If you put 2 here, this will become 8. So if you put 2 here, the side become 4, right? Because that becomes the diameter, side is the diameter. So the diameter and the side is actually same. So the ratio will remain always as 4 pi. Whatever be the value, you can you can make the square bigger. Okay, so similarly you need to change the circle also. If the circle is uh, touching both the side, all the four sides, the diameter and the side will be equal. Okay, so this and this will be equal and uh, this and this will be equal so the side and the diameter will be equal now every time they will maintain a ratio 4 is to pi okay then only this condition will satisfy touching all the four points right now if you observe uh, in this case in this case the squares are making a series gp as well as a circle is also making a gp right so if you consider them separately this this is actually two gps so if start off with uh, if you start off with the square if you take it's actually a square like this like this something which we have discussed right so that is a gp with a common difference 1 by 2 right again the circle is also like that because if you if you add a more circle i told you this is this is 4 this is pi this is 2 this is pi by 2 right this is 1 this is pi by 4 like that it will go right so all these will be in the ratio this will be like uh, this is 4 
this is two, this is one, this is uh, half of it, one by two, etc. It will go. Same way, if you take the circles, circles will be in the ratio of pi, pi by two, pi by four, pi by eight, etc. So for uh, four, it is pi, right? This is how it will work. For four, it is pi. For two, it is pi by two. For one, it is pi by four. For one by two, it is pi by two. In all case, ratio of four is to pi is maintained. So you can find the area of squares, the total area of squares. You can find the total area of the circle also based on what we have discussed, right? Because the common ratio is there, right? So here, 1 by 2. Here also, 1 by 2. Common ratio is 1 by 2. So if you know the outer area, that is, let's say, A, 1 minus 1 by 2. Same case of this also, 1 minus 1 by 2. So you can find the answer faster here, right? Okay, if the first term and the third term is given, okay, let's take uh, 1 as the first term and 5 as the third term. How will you find the second term? This is an inner AP, right? So, it's like this is A and this is C is given, you need to find B, right? We call it as arithmetic mean or the middle term of an AP, right? Or uh, this is nothing but average only. How will you find it is actually A plus C by 2, right? So, this is how you'll find the middle term. So, what is the answer? 3 is the answer a plus c by 2 what about three terms are there a plus b plus c by 3 right so this is what arithmetic mean or simply you will tell average right what about a gp let's suppose you have 1 4 is given you need to find the middle term right so if this is a this is c this is b how will you how will you write b b is equal to root ac or ac raised to 1 by 2 right so what is that 2 root of 4 which is equal to 2 right what if three terms are there you will write it as a b c raised to 1 by 3 what is a harmonic progression i'll discuss that in detail when it comes to speed distance time right so harmonic mean concepts and application we'll discuss in uh, speed distance time because uh, you will see questions like average speed right there you will be using see in different situations you will do you will use uh, two different aspects either you will use see if the question is something like this you are traveling from a to b okay you are going to a, b and you are coming from b to a right on first uh, this you are uh, going at 4 kilometer 40 kilometer per hour and you are coming back at 60 kilometer per hour right so here if you see the distance is constant right distance is same you are going and coming right same distance so in this case you need to find the harmonic mean of speeds harmonic mean of speeds is what your average speed right so how will you get that 2ab by a plus b that is nothing but 2 divided by 1 by a plus 1 by b right so what is harmonic mean harmonic mean is actually if two terms are there 2 divided by 1 by a plus 1 by b if three terms are there 3 divided by 1 by a plus 1 by b plus 1 by c so here in this case there is an application of harmonic mean so if you find the answer you will get it as 48 you will get it as 48 so where you are applying harmonic mean when the distance is constant if you see otherwise if time is constant or for the first one hour you are traveling at 40 km per hour and the next uh, one hour you are traveling at 60 km per hour then what is the average speed average speed is nothing but simple average right so 40 plus 60 by 2 that that you will get 50 right so this 50 is actually what average speed you are just taking average so here 48 is also average speed but you are taking harmonic mean okay just by seeing average speed you should not take average directly why because this is uh, this is nothing but 40 into 1 and 50 60 into 1 divided by 2 total so you are finding the sum of the distance covered divided by time you are getting the speed right so why i am writing 40 plus 60 is basically this is nothing but 40 into 1 that is a distance covered plus 60 into 1 that is a distance covered divided by total time so distance by time is your speed right so that's the application of harmonic mean so harmonic mean i'll discuss in detail in uh, speed distance time there you'll see a lot of applications also when it comes to average speed we will solve problems also so what we have discussed arithmetic mean is uh, a plus c by 2 geometric mean is root of ac or ac raised to 1 by 2 right harmonic mean is 2ab by a plus b so what all things we discussed we start off with ap ap uh, we have seen 1 2 3 4 5 etc there's an ap right so i told you how to find the nth term right a plus n minus 1 into d right so how many terms are there if you need to find you know you need to know the last term minus first term divided by the common difference right and plus 1 then sum 
of n terms means n by 2 into 2a plus n minus 1 into d right or you have alternative if you know the first and last term n by 2 into first term plus last term right so if you know the last term this is applicable right if you don't know the last term if you know the first term and the common difference and number of terms this is applicable what about gp what is the nth term a r raised to n minus 1 what is sum a into 1 minus r raised to n divided by 1 minus r right and a into r raised to n minus 1 divided by r minus 1 okay so it depends on r value if r greater than 1 we'll use this if r less than 1 we'll use this right what about sum to infinity of a gp i have given you the application question also the uh, you have a square adding the midpoint you get another square adding the midpoint you get another square and you keep on adding so it is it is an infinite gp sum of areas if you need to find the outer area that means the first term divided by 1 minus r right so in the square which i have told you is 256 was the area that is outer area first term divided by 1 minus 1 by 2 that is nothing but 512 right arithmetic mean the middle term a plus c by 2 right if 3 is there a plus b plus c by 3 geometric uh, mean root of ac or ac raised to 1 by 2 if 3 is there abc raised to 1 by 3 harmonic mean that is nothing but if two terms are there 2 divided by 1 by a plus 1 by b harmonic progression is actually a reciprocal of arithmetic progression right so this is nothing but 2 a b by a plus b or if three terms are there 3 divided by 1 by a plus 1 by b plus 1 by c right this is what we have discussed till now now some special cases see you may think that uh, ap is nothing but 1 2 3 4 5 6 etc etc right so naturally uh, it is an easy question anything can be attempted easily right but they can re re they can make a really difficult question from here uh, let's take a question like this how many ways uh, you can write 100 as sum of uh, consecutive natural numbers right some Consecutive natural numbers means it's an AP, right? So this is again AP related question only. 100, how many ways you can write it as sum of uh, consecutive natural numbers? Okay, so here you need to go for trial and error uh, method, right? So this is just a random question. Otherwise, see, if they are given the starting first term as 18, then it is not a question. You have only one way, right? 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Otherwise, if you see how many ways you can write, it is a difficult question. Right, the other possibility of writing this is 12.5 into 8 is actually 100, right? So you can make 12.5 as average, so 12 and 13 you write first, then 12.5 into 8, right? So write 3 terms here, 11, 10, 9, 14, 15, 16, this is another way. So they can actually make really complicated questions, this, these are the two ways. I tell you the logic and how you are writing this, all these things will be discussed. After some time, I'll, I'll take up this as a different session, sum of uh, consecutive natural numbers. So you can get a separate session and uh, separate sheet also for uh, this kind of pattern. So this I'll be discussing along with the difference of square pattern, sum of consecutive number pattern, etc. Right? So I'll, I'll discuss all the logic behind this. Right? Now otherwise, uh, simply they can ask you questions based on first 10 natural numbers, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Right? What is this sigma n? Sigma n, you learn another formula, right? n into n plus 1 by 2. What does this actually mean? If you try to find the sum of an AP, if you consider this as an AP, what is the sum of this? Let's take n terms are there, right? What is the what is our formula? n by 2 into first term, that is 1, plus last term, right? This is what uh, you got here only, right? This is n by 2, this is n by 2, n plus 1, 1 plus n, right? So both are actually same. So you can get questions based on sigma n right we will discuss sigma n also separately because uh, i have many different patterns to discuss right it's like uh, some of the page numbers of a book uh, is adding and uh, the person is missing a page and he got some number like 199 what is the page number he missed out or uh, the person is adding the page numbers he added one page extra and he got 220 what is the page number he added so these are some uh, typical cat questions that we have seen in the previous papers, right? So I'll discuss this as a separate pattern. Or the question can be asked like this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, etc. It is written on a blackboard up to like uh, 30 numbers, okay? The first person will come, he will cut, uh, he will rub off any two and will add the sum, right? So he will write 3 instead of 1 and 2. The second person will come and uh, take uh, any two off and will write the sum here, right? The third person will come and... Uh, will do the same process and will write the sum he keep on doing it till you complete it and finally you get a sum what is that 
So that is also again application of sigma n only. Basically what you need to find is sigma n. Here you need to find sigma 30, right? Because that operation will be performed uh, 29 times and you'll get finally sigma 30 itself. You get the total sum. So all these questions you need to solve by using sigma n. So in that question which I have discussed where the person is counting the page number of a book, he is trying to find sigma n but he is not getting sigma n. How will you solve it? Okay, for example, you know, what you are doing is actually you are counting the page number of a book starting from 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. You are adding a page and what is happening? You are getting a number which is 220 which is... Uh, not a sigma n number, right? Because you are actually supposed to get a sigma n number here, right? You are counting the page numbers, you are adding the page numbers means 1, 3, 6, 10, 15, 21, etc. These are the numbers that you are supposed to get. Why? Because first page, if you are, this is for 1 plus 2, you get this. 1 plus 2 plus 3, you get this. If you add 4th page, you get this. 5th page, you get this. 6th page, you get this. Like that, right? So he is trying to find these numbers. 1, 3, 6, 10, 15. What are those numbers? This number is also called as triangular numbers. These things I will discuss later, right? Why it is called as triangular number? Because you can write, tri you can make triangles with this, right? It's like this. You can visualize like this, right? If 10, you can make triangles with these numbers, right? Now, another thing which you can see here is if you add these numbers, you get square numbers, right? You get square numbers. Why you call this a square numbers? Because, because you can make squares, right? This is what 16, right? So this is what 9. So the point is, uh, he is trying to find a sigma n number. That means 1, 3, 6, 10, 15, 21, etc. The, your answer should belong to this series. But what he is getting is 220. Why? Because he is adding a page extra. That means this number don't belong to the series. So what you need to find is, the logic is you need to find the nearest sigma n number to 220. Nearest sigma n number to 220, which is on the lower side. Actually, it is 210 because 210 is a part of this. Okay, that means if the book is having 20 pages, right? 20 pages means 20 into 21 by 2, right? So, this is nothing but 210. If the book is having 20 pages, you are supposed to get 210. But he counted the 10th page and he got 220. That's how you need to solve. You need to find the sigma n number. That means the number which comes in this series on a lower side to 220. Why on a lower side? Because you are double counting. If you are missing a page, I will take the next number, definitely, next sigma n number. So if you know this sigma n numbers, if you know the series, the question is just a cakewalk. You can see the it is 220, I know sigma n number, that is 210, so the missed, the added page is 10, direct. Or you are missing a page and you are getting 200, right, you are missing a page and you are getting 200. I know the nearest sigma n number on the higher side is 210, so I can pick 10 as a page number he missed out. But for that it is very difficult, you cannot remember all the sigma n's, right. So if you can remember then it is easy. Otherwise what you will do is, what I am trying to do is n into n plus 1 by 2 is what I am trying to find and I am getting 220, right? I tried to find this value but I got 220. I know this is not correct but I know this is approximate value because he added one page extra. So I can mark it as approximately equal to 220, right? Now that means n into n plus 1 is approximately equal to 440. So n square plus n approximately is equal to 440. Now compared to n square, n is small. So I can approximate again n square is equal to 440. Now if you need to know n, so basically you need to find n. If you can find n, you can find sigma n easily, right? So if you find n, it will be between 20 and 21. So it will be between 20 and 21, right? 440 is between 20 and 21. I need to take any of this as my n. Which one I'll take? I'll take 20 because I'm double counting. If I was missing a page, I will take 21. I will take it on the higher side, right? Now, I got n as 20. So after this, what I will do? I will find sigma n. 20 into 21 by 2, I get 210. So this is the value which you are supposed to get. But what you got is 220. So which page number you added? You added 10th page. Right? So answer this question is 10. You added 10th page double uh, twice. But if the question was something like this, you are adding the page numbers of a book and you are missing a page and you got 200. So you are getting 200, right? You are missing a page and you are getting 200. Now onwards, if you see this kind of question, first step that you need to do is take twice of it. You will get 400, then take root of it, you get 20. 20, assume this is your n, okay? 20 is your n. You find the sigma n number with 20, you will get 210. So what you actually got when you are counting, you got it as 200. Actual value is 210. So what is the difference? 10 is the difference. So which page number was missed out? 10th page is missed out. Or... If the question was you are counting the page numbers, you are missing a page and you are getting 199. What you will do? Same step. You, do, you don't bother about anything. You understood that you are missing a page. You are trying to find sigma n. You are missing a page and you are getting a different number, right? So take that number 199. Take double of it, right? And you get 398. Take root of it. 
you get it you get it between 19 and 20 okay so this n value is either 19 or 20 which one you will take you have to take 20 because you are missing a page if you are adding a page you will get 19 okay now by using 20 you can find the actual sum of uh, the page numbers right or actual sigma n 20 into 21 by 2 you will get 210 so 210 is what you got what you are supposed to get but what you got is 199 why because 11th page you missed out then now you can get questions based on this also 1 square plus 2 square plus 3 square etc 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 right how like the way they are asking you questions this is nothing but uh, what is this this is nothing but sigma n square and what is the answer n into n plus 1 into 2n plus 1 divided by 6 right now how can you make a question like a person came he is writing 1 2 3 4 5 6 etc on a blackboard right another person will come and he will write uh, 2 3 4 5 6 etc another person will write 3 4 5 6 etc another will write 4 5 6 etc etc so finally if you take the sum what will be the sum right so this is nothing but here it is 1 here it is 2 into 2 2 square here it is 3 times 3 that is nothing but 3 square this is nothing but 4 square right that will be 5 square 6 square etc right this is nothing but sigma n square so n into n plus 1 into 2n plus 1 divided by 6 now there can be questions based on uh, 1 cube plus 2 cube plus 3 cube etc etc right this is nothing but sigma n cube what is that n into n plus 1 by 2 you you are you already know this right what is this n into n plus 1 by 2 that is nothing but sigma n take square of it you will get sigma n cube otherwise you will get questions like uh, 1 3 5 7 9 etc 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 find uh, sum okay this is an ap with a common difference to starting with 1 and uh, it is going on right you may get the nth term also not a problem right assume that you have 9 terms or uh, 1 2 3 4 5 5 terms right so if you need to find sum this is nothing but odd numbers right sum of first n odd numbers that's what the question is your answer will be n square so if uh, n is 5 here if you see here n is 5 this is first term second term third term fourth term fifth term right so your answer is 5 square so 5 square is 25 now what is 5 square see a square number if you take you can also understand in this way 5 square is actually equal to first 5 odd number sum uh, like this 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9 that's how you can understand phi square in a different way so if you are finding the sum of this you can take it as phi square or phi square can be understood as sum of first five odd numbers 10 square sum of first 10 odd numbers 6 square sum of first 6 odd numbers right what is 3 square what is 3 square sum of first 3 odd numbers 3 square is 9 first 3 odd numbers 1 3 and 5 right so if you add you will get this so a square number can be understood as sum of first n odd numbers so n square if you need to know sum of first n odd numbers or the reverse is what we have discussed here okay if you need to find the sum of first n odd numbers you take n square what about sum of uh, 2 4 6 8 10 etc etc even number so basically this is nothing but sum of first n even numbers right this is nothing but n square plus n so you take uh, sum of first 3 even numbers right so 2 4 6 i need to find sum of first 3 even numbers so what is n n is 3 3 square is 9 plus 3 that is 12 okay let's add this 6 and 6 12 so what i need to tell you is sum of first n even numbers if you need to find n square plus n sum of first n odd numbers is n square so any square number you can think in this reverse way also how, how, how you are actually getting a square number if you are finding 100 square what does this mean sum of first 100 odd numbers so you are actually finding first 100 odd numbers that is what your sum okay that is what your square so 15 square is 225 what does this mean i can now directly see 1 3 5 7 9 5 okay 11 13 15 17 19 10 numbers right if you take the sum of it you will get 5 square if you get the sum up to this you get 10 square now 21 23 25 27 29 you get 
15 square if you take sum of all this right so that is what 225 i hope you understood so what all things we discussed the special cases sigma n i have told you two questions anyway i am going to discuss a lot of questions based on sigma n we will discuss sigma n in detail i'll spend half a session for that even uh, i'll spend 40 minute for this discussion in the next session okay then uh, number a sum of uh, consecutive numbers okay so this also i'll discuss in detail this is nothing but you need to find the number of odd factors this is nothing but number of odd factors of that number so if you need to know 100 can be how many ways 100 can be written as uh, sum of consecutive natural numbers means odd factors of 100 how many ways 60 can be written as sum of uh, consecutive natural numbers means how many odd factors of 60 is there right so you know how to find odd factors even factors etc we have already discussed so 100 is actually 5 square into 2 square how many odd factors is there 3 odd factor is there 60 is 2 square into 3 into 5 how many odd factors there you avoid 2 2 into 2 which is equal to 4 so 60 can be written as 4 ways 100 can be written as 3 ways out of that 100 itself is 1 way so subtract it you get 2 you subtract it you get 3 so actually how many ways you can write is number of odd factors minus 1 that many ways you can write a number as sum of consecutive natural numbers so if you need to answer how many ways 100 can be written as sum of consecutive natural numbers answer is 3 minus 1 that is 2 how many ways 60 can be written as uh, sum of consecutive natural numbers 4 minus 1 that is 3 what is 3 number of odd factor what is 4 number of odd factor so if you need to generalize number of odd factor minus 1 then we have seen sigma n square we have seen sigma n cube this is nothing but n into n plus 1 into 2n plus 1 divided by 6 this is nothing but n into n plus 1 by 2 whole square right we have also seen uh, sum of first and odd numbers as n square sum of first and even numbers as n square plus n okay now let's quickly see what are the different types of uh, ap's and uh, how their sum will look like on a graph right so what are the different types of ap if you see there are uh, basically you have uh, increasing ap and you have decreasing ap right if you need to see ap is two different types uh, increasing and decreasing now within increasing itself you can have uh, two categories starting with uh, positive and starting with negative right starting with positive means 2 4 6 8 10 etc it will go this is a increasing ap and starting with a positive number right 2 negative it will be like minus 12 minus 8 minus uh, 4 0 4 etc right so this is starting with negative number but it is increasing now decreasing means what in decreasing also you can again see uh, starting with positive and starting with negative right see if you see starting with positive means you can start with 10 8 6 4 2 0 etc this is decreasing gp decreasing ap starting with positive right now starting with negative you can see like minus 2 minus 4 minus 6 etc etc now same classification is applicable for gp also right gp also you can see increasing and decreasing starting with positive starting with negative here also starting with positive and starting with negative so basically we need to see eight different types of four in ap and four in gp right so let's start off with uh, ap i'll start with uh, increasing ap okay and we'll discuss two types in increasing ap let's start off with a positive number right positive the AP which is starting with a positive number, let's start with 2, 4, 8, 6, 10, basic AP, right? Now, you know the sum, this is something which you have seen uh, just before, n square plus n and all, you know the sum, but uh, I, I'll just tell you how the sum will look like on a graph, right? So, if you plot a graph and on this uh, y-axis sum and on the x-axis if you take number of terms, it will go like this. So the sum keeps on increasing if the number of terms is increasing right starting with positive right now what about an ap increasing ap which is starting with a negative number like let's take uh, minus 4 minus 2 right 0 2 4 etc right how will it go how will it look like if you need to plot uh, on a graph right it will start from negative it will go to negative then it will come back right why because if you take the first term this is minus 4 then minus 4 minus 2 means somewhere minus 6 there is nothing but minus 6 then if you add 0 again same right then you add 2 it becomes minus 4 again then you add uh, 4 then it becomes 0 then like that it will go right now what about a decreasing ap decreasing ap starting with positive it, it will look like uh, 8 4 right 0 
minus 4, minus 8, etc. Right? How will it look like on a graph? Here, if you see the first term is positive, right? So it will start from positive, go to positive, and will come down because uh, this is 8, first term, right? So this will be 8 plus 4, this will be 12. And if you add 0, it will be 12 itself, right? Then if you add minus 4, it will come back here. If you add minus 8, it will come to 0. Like that, it will go, right? Then it will take these points, right? What about a decreasing AP starting with negative? Starting with negative, like uh, minus 2, minus 4, minus 6, minus 8, etc. How will it look like? It will look like this, right? Because it start, starting itself is minus, then minus is accumulating, right? So it will look like this. What about GP? Increasing GP, starting with positive. You can take uh, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, etc. Right? How will it look like? It will look like this, right? If you take sum, if on y-axis you take sum and number of terms, the graph look like this. What about uh, increasing GP starting with negative? Let's take minus 8, minus 4, minus 1, 1 by 2, etc, 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 right? See, if you see all the numbers, it is uh, all are negative, right? It is increasing, but uh, still all are negative, right? Uh, how is it increasing? If you see minus 8 to minus 4, minus 4 to minus 1, minus 4 to minus 1 by 2, then minus 1 by 4, all values are negative. So it will look like this on a graph. Now after some time, if you find the sum, it will, uh, you know, uh, it will be almost same, okay? Approximately the values will be same. Now 1 by 2, 1 by 4, 1 by 8, 1 by 16, etc. If you go towards infinity, these values uh, will be almost same, right? Now what about uh, decreasing GP starting with uh, positive, like uh, 12, 6, 3, then 3 by 2 that is 1.5 right then 1.5 by 2 that is 0 0.75 etc how will it look like on a graph if you plot a graph on y axis sum and on x axis uh, number of terms it will look like this right because uh, it keeps on increasing it will increase but after some time uh, when it going towards infinity right this is going to be almost equal right now what about uh, decreasing gp starting with negative that is uh, minus 2, minus 4, minus 8, minus 16, etc. It will look like this, right? All are negative, it will go like this, right? This is sum and this is number of terms. So what we have seen is AP, GP, right? Within that, increasing and decreasing, right? Within increasing, starting with positive and starting with negative. Here also starting with positive, starting with negative, right? So in an AP, if it is increasing AP, starting with positive terms, it will look like this right starting with negative terms it will look like this in a decreasing ap starting with positive how will it look like it will look like this starting with negative it will look like this now in gp also you can see increasing and uh, decreasing and starting with positive starting with negative starting with positive starting with negative right starting with positive how will it look like increasing gp starting with positive will look like this increasing gp starting with negative will look like will look like this right towards the infinity it, the value is almost same now decreasing gp starting with positive how will it look like decreasing so it will go like this right now decreasing gp starting with negative how will it look like it look like this right it look like this so let me conclude quickly what we have seen ap gp right four types of ap four types of gp so total eight different categories we have discussed and we have seen the nature of sum on a graph right in eight different types of situations where ap and gp is involved right so if it is an ap if it is an increasing ap starting with positive look like this increasing ap starting with negative look like this e decreasing ap starting with positive look like this decreasing ap starting with negative look like this right now if it is increasing gp starting with positive look like this starting with negative look like this if it is a decreasing GP starting with positive look like this, starting with negative look like this. So some of the questions if they are giving you the graph directly and will ask you to identify, okay, they will give you which among the following represent the graph of a decreasing GP which is starting with positive, right? You can directly pick.